Hey everyone, it's Nelson Miller here with PA Creative. Today I have another tutorial for the Divi blog module. So in our other one for the blog, we told you how to make any number of columns that we wanted and remember how easy that was. So I want to follow up and instead of columns, you may want it more of like a list view. So when I say list, it's I'm thinking of where there's an image on the one side and the details on the other. So I'm going to show you how to do that. You can put it whichever way you want. If you want the image on the left, details on the right or or the opposite. And I'm going to show you how easy it is to do that with just a little snippet of CSS. So let's get started. The first thing we are going to do to make our blog module have this layout. In fact, let me just show you. It'll have a layout similar to that um, with an image on the left and all the details on the right. It's really, really easy. Um, so basically, we need to start by adding a blog module, obviously. So and you may be tempted to put it into grid mode, which I typically do. I almost, I almost always have it in grid mode, this here. Um, but we need it on full width for this one. So, okay, that's added. And, you know, it's obviously too large for me, but that's okay. That's our first step. And you can follow along over on the blog post, actually, if you need to. So we've done that. That was easy. So now we need to add a little bit of CSS. And I'll, ex I'll explain what each of it does, each little bit of code. So let me just, let's just copy it for now. And we'll get started that way. So I'll copy the snippet that's over there on the blog post, put it into my example here, and I'll just walk you through when you see what it does here. Okay, so just like that, you're done, you know. You can end the video if that's all you wanna do, but if you wanna learn, here I'm gonna to try to explain it to you. So first of all, we have it in a media query. So we're saying, you know, this CSS applies above 767 pixels. Okay, so this is going to apply except for when you're on a phone. So when you're on a phone, it's just gonna stack like normal. That's why we have it in a media query. In fact, we have a whole tutorial on that, on media queries. So anyway, the, there's two things we're targeting here. That's it, just two. We're targeting the featured image, but we're kind of targeting like the outer shell of the image, if that makes sense. I'm trying to break this down in non-code language, but um, not the actual image, but like the frame of the image. So that's what we're targeting here. And we're just saying width, 30%. Okay, that's simple enough. Um, and you'll notice that the other thing over here, I'm targeting the title, the meta, and the content all at once. So I have them separated by commas, that each one of these is being targeted. And I say width, 70%. So you can see that obviously that equals 100%. And the same thing applies here, float left. So that's just, the reason we're doing that is so that they, like you could you could have this 30% and this 70%, but it would stack. Okay, so by adding the float left to each one of these things, then it, you know, obviously gets in a horizontal line there, okay? And I'm pointing on my screen here and you can't see my hand, so. Um, <laughs> So that's almost it. The other thing I did there on the image was got rid of the margin on the bottom of that image. So by default, and this makes a lot of sense, by default, the image will have a margin down here because when it's stacked, otherwise it would bang into the title. All right, so I got rid of that. And then this one here, we say padding left. And I'll just demonstrate what that is right there. See that? It's just adding some spacing to the left of the you know, the, the details here. So literally that's how you do it. Now we're going to take it a step further because, you know, let's have some fun with this. All right. So there you go. Let's add some fancy styling. So the first thing we can do, well, copy this. And of course I haven't even played with the module design settings yet, but let's just add this extra snippet and I'll tell you what we're doing here. So the first thing we did, we added a box shadow to the post. So this ETPB post is targeting each one of these. Um, what would happen, and this is kind of a problem with some of the Divi modules, if I would go in here and go down to the box shadow right here and add something, it puts it around the entire thing. Um, that's just not what we want. Um, on my plugin, the Divi events calendar, we have, we have it all working so that the border and 
box shell and everything is for that because that makes more sense. Anyway, so we just added a box shadow and we added padding. Now we could also add, um, well, it looks like I added border radius. It's just really hard to see because of the, of how light it is, but I actually did round the corners. In fact, let's just make it a little more obvious. You can see it there. Um, I hate big radiuses though. I like around six to 10. Anyway, so you could also target the image and round it and do anything like that, but I'm just showing you a couple ways. Like I think this looks cool how they're separated with the padding and the little slight box shadow. All right, let's see what else we have here. So I had a whole series on making images square in Divi. So I'm showing you how to do that here. There's one caveat, which I'll explain. So copy that if you want to do this. I mean, this is totally optional, um, but I'll just show you if you were going for this look. Um, I'll show you a couple things here. Just wait. So paste that in there. And you'll notice that they're square, and that's because I did not follow my tutorial necessarily for the blog images. I'll link that in the tutorial. But normally this would say right here, um, padding top 100%. But the reason we can't say that is because we're already up here telling this this URL, um, entry featured image URL to be width 30%. So to keep it square, we had to say 30% um, margin top here. And I know that can be confusing, but anyway, so what could we do differently? There's a couple of things we could do. What if you want the image and the detail switched? Well, this is a really easy one. So here where we say float left, say float right, and you'll have to do it to both of them. And I'm blocking you. Check it out. That it worked. Now you would want to also change, let's see that one thing, the um, padding. So instead of padding left, you'd want to make it padding right. See that? Because the spacing is now here. So just like that, we flipped it. Um, let's say you wanted to make it 50% wide. Okay, so it, obviously it doesn't work until I make them both 50. 50 and 70 is 120. That doesn't work. So if I make them like that, that works great. Um, and again, so if you wanted this to be back the other way, just change the float left. I like it that way better, to be honest. Um, let's see. There we go. So there you could do that. And then we changed that to 50% wide. So we'd need to change this to a 50% as well. And if you have other ideas for the blog tutorials, let me know. Because I'm kind of looking for new ideas. I mean, there's only so much you can do. I'll probably do one on the the button, styling the button. Um, but yeah, let me know what you have in mind. All right, so that's how you change the Divi blog module to a list layout. If you enjoy that, be sure to let me know in the comments, either here on YouTube or ever on the blog post. And be sure to let me know what you would like to see, and especially for the blog module. What do you want to see me do for the blog module, something I can add to our series here on the blog. I'm, I'm really looking for your suggestions. I know the blog module is a popular one. Obviously, you know, it's pretty important if you have, you know, any sort of blog on your site. So let me know what you would like me to show you how to do or talk about with the blog, and we'll see you in the next video.